Give your host one more time, y'all. Give it up. So, like he told you guys, my name is Kenny Warren, a.k.a. The Average Black Man. And uh, I'm from the West Coast, but not L.A. I'm the only black dude y'all ever met from Portland, Oregon. <laughs> I know that because every time I tell people I'm from Portland, they always ask me the same fucking question. And they whisper it. It's black people in Portland? <laughs> and I always give them the same answer. Hell no, I'm not. <laughs> and Portland is one of those places that's 2% black. Kind of like this room, so I feel right in right now. <laughs> this is like a walk down my block right here. This is very, very familiar. Snapple fact about Portland, it rains 200 times a year. So people are real depressed. A lot of motherfuckers commit suicide. I was talking to a comedian from Seattle, Washington, same area. He told me the second open mic he ever went to, the comedian before him went on stage and blew his brains out. So I was like, well shit, how the fuck you follow an act like that? I'm like, that guy killed. And I know that shit was dark. I know it was. But so am I, y'all. So come on, take this trip. Man. Let's loosen the fuck up. <laughs> so I live in the Bronx. Two things about the Bronx. Everybody in the Bronx has dogs. Nobody in the Bronx has bags to pick up dog shit. <laughs> so it's like hopscotch every day. Hopscotch every day. Every day. And I worked today and I caught the train down. And let me tell y'all something. The talent on the train is still amazing. I know y'all familiar with the kids selling fruit snacks, but not for no basketball team, right? <laughs> And I know y'all familiar with the dudes flipping around the poles, almost kicking you in the face, too. Right? <laughs> but have you seen the blind magician yet? They got a blind magician on the train, I swear to God. And I was sitting there watching him do his thing, and I was thinking to myself, when he makes shit disappear, how the fuck does he know? <laughs> Next stop, a lady gets on the train. She was like, I'm sorry to interrupt you guys, but I've been homeless in Chicago, Detroit, Charlotte, Denver, Seattle, and I'm from Washington, D.C. She said, the doctor diagnosed me with bipolar schizophrenia, but I'm not letting that get me down <laughs> or up. <laughs> but if you can scarcely change or a little something to eat, God will bless you. And I didn't give her shit. Because <laughs> I've never been to Chicago or Detroit. And I got questions. So I pulled out my money and was like, how did you get from Charlotte to Denver. Was that Wander Roar to China? <laughs> Don't touch that. <laughs> I wish I had another dollar. I would say, how did you get in my joke? <laughs> so I'm a single dad, y'all. I said I'm a single fucking dad. <laughs> I got two boys. They'll be 25 and 20 this year. And I know what y'all thinking. Black don't crack. Did this guy have kids in the seventh grade? <laughs> nah, I'm just black. And, uh, I've been going green the last 25 years, hiding in the weeds, so. Nah, the whole process of raising the kids was a beautiful thing, I will say that. But now that they're grown, I can honestly look back and say, I hate kids. Uh, they lie when you want them to tell the truth, they tell the truth when you want them to lie, and time out does not work. If you want your kid to be successful, you gotta whoop your kid's ass. If you don't whoop your kid's ass, they're gonna end up over on St. Mark's selling art. This is real shit right now, y'all. This is from the heart, because I rule my household with a heavy hand. In my household, a choke was just a hug with my hands. And because of that, I got my oldest boy to college. He was president of the Black Engineers Association at Oregon State. Or as I like to call him, my 401k plan. <laughs> and he changed his major his last year to bioenergy. And I'm gonna be honest with y'all, I don't know what the fuck that is, but I know we about to be rich. I can tell you. <laughs> Shit is only getting better. But you can't have just one kid. You gotta have at least two of them, because one of them might be fucked up. You know what I mean? <laughs> that jail kid, you know that throw away that take that, take that, take that, take that. Because my other son, I call him Shaggy, because every time something comes up broken or missing in the crib, he says, it wasn't me. <laughs> I want to listen to hip hop in here. Hey. So crazy, man. But my kid, you know, my my, my youngest kid, uh, he's not all, he's not a bad kid, you know. He's not, you know, he's not all bad. Uh, he started college, 
uh, this past fall. He has a job. But sometimes, sometimes he backslides with his chores. And when he does that, he'll hit me up for a haircut and I'll put him off. So recently, this just happened. He was like, yo, dad, I gotta come see you for a haircut. I can't be around here looking stupid. So I was like, come to the barbershop because I want to see how stupid he looked. And he sat in my chair, took off his hat, and I was like, what the fuck happened to your hair, son? He was like, I cut it myself. I said, well, what? You don't have no clippers. He said, I used the ones in the bathroom. I was like, the black ones or the gray ones? He said, the gray ones. I was like, <laughs> Damn, son, those are the clippers I used to cut my balls here with. <laughs> and his lips started quivering. <laughs> and I was like, oh, you cut your mustache too, huh? <laughs> he was like, nah, nah, I said, stop lying. Your mustache never looked better. I was like, this is a prime example for you to learn from. Don't fuck with other people's shit without asking because you're gonna fucking up your hair and you sex played yourself at the same damn time. <laughs> now look at you. You are literally a dickhead. <laughs> Sometimes I think about having more kids, but then I think about the silver patch that goes all the way down to my pubes. <laughs> and then I think about the movie Benjamin Button. <laughs> and then I just go watch porn instead. <laughs> so crazy. I'm looking around this room right now, and I see a lot of millennials in here. You know why? Because I see hope in y'all's eyes. <laughs> Futures and all that. And I'm a Gen X dude. Like I said, I'm a barber by trade, so I cut a lot of millennials here. So I fuck with y'all a little bit. I just don't understand y'all's appetite. You can't eat nothing. No MSG, no GMOs, no lactose. And I'm a milk connoisseur. I love all the milks. 2% milk. Fat-free milk. Whole milk. And it's one milk they should be selling in stores, and it's easy to market. And that's breast milk. <laughs> Think about it. You can put it in titty nipple shaped bottles. <laughs> All the guys are gonna be in that part of the store trying to decide if they want a gallon or a pint. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> what size titty do you like? You know? Don't answer you by your girl. Don't answer. <laughs> then you can name the milk after women with good breasts, like Sophia Vergara. Whole titty milk. <laughs> or maybe some Cameron Diaz. Two <laughs> percent titty milk. <laughs> you know she got the little ones. You know. And this is the unicorn right here. How about some Serena Williams? Chocolate flavored muscle milk. <laughs> Can't find that shit everywhere. Yes. And I'm not an ageist. So how about some Betty White? <laughs> Powdered titty milk. <laughs> you can just mix that with coffee grounds and snort it, you know? <laughs> no liquid needed. And it was gay pride a few months ago, so we gotta touch every demographic. So how about some Ellen DeGeneres? Homogenized titty milk. <laughs> or maybe some Rashida Jones half and half. I'm just throwing shit out there. Now. <laughs> then all you bright-eyed millennials, y'all can just drink almond milk. But just know that almond milk ain't shit except for the milk that comes from crazy bitches' titties. <laughs> y'all know almonds are nuts. <laughs> you slow burn for that ass, right? I see a future, though, where you can go to a restaurant with a breast-free zone, order a coffee, cut out the middleman, no carton, and get your milk straight. Titty the table. Just titty the table. It's organic. And breast milk dispensaries where you can get exclusive and get left breast milk for emotional balance and intelligence, right breast milk for musical comprehension and athleticism. And that's the shit I think about when I'm smoking weed, y'all. Any weed smokers in the building? Where y'all at? Where are we I'm proud of this room. Because usually when I ask that question below 14th Street, it gets real, real quiet in the room. And that's when I know I'm in a cocaine environment. <laughs> Much love to y'all, though, for letting me push the limit on that last titty joke, though. I appreciate that. I know I crossed the line and said titty at least 15 times just now. I know that. But I was just trying to keep y'all abreast of what's going on right now. <laughs> I was going with that shit. Milk the shit out that joke, right? <laughs> I'm done. I'm done. So like I said, man, um, I work at a barbershop in Spanish Harlem, and um, I'm always telling the other barbers, you know, how important it is that you get some white friends, because, you know, I'm from Oregon, 2% black. I grew up with white friends, so, you know, I, I'm like, listen, you get to do shit with your, your white friends, you can't do it with your black friends. For example, Raheem, Raheem can't take you white water rafters. <laughs> No, Raheem can't swim. And Malik, Malik can't take you bungee jumping. Because he's afraid of heights, me down to earth. And that's why I consider my white friends to be like coupons. And when I get all my white friends together, 
That's a group on. Just simple math, y'all. Just simple math. Tell you, man, this comedy shit is tough, though. Cause we do shows all over the city. We do shows at hookah bar where we interrupted a hookah smoke. <laughs> Hell, I did a show in the rehab center last week. I was trying to get back. But usually I wear beer t-shirts on stage, and I thought that would have been fucked up for me to come into the rehab center with a Heineken, a Guinness, or a Corona t-shirt. So I put a soda pop t-shirt on. But then I got on stage and realized my shirt said, Enjoy Coke. <laughs> Still some of fucked up messages. So crazy. 2020 is coming fast, y'all, and they're about to put Harriet Tubman on a $20 bill. Fucking amazing, right? But let me tell you something. I'm torn, y'all. I'm torn because I feel like it's way more logical to put Harriet Tubman on a $20 Metro card. The subway ain't nothing but the Underground Railroad anyway. <laughs> now, racists say, don't put her on the money because she's black and she's a woman. So I say put Caitlyn Jenner on the money because she's white and she's a dude. <laughs> but don't put her on the dollar bills, though. Put her on the coins. What? I'm talking about change here, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> not to mention the fact, not to mention the fact, if, if, if a black person's on the money, I could just see racists running to the bank, taking out all their money, and putting it in their wallet just so they can have niggas in their pocket. I don't want to see it. I don't want to see it. I don't want to see it. Ladies, give it up for yourselves right now, all of you. The way you woke up beautiful, like what Beyonce said. Do it, y'all. Give it up. Clap. I'm talking about the natural woman before the mascara, before the lipstick, before the eyebrows get done so much they start to look like cherry stems. <laughs> then sometimes the eyebrows are done too well. You know the airbrushers from Instagram. Fellas, be careful, that's a Ponzi scheme. <laughs> you wake up in the morning and look like somebody crumbled weed over eyes. <laughs> then women is going to third world countries and getting body augmentation and getting all kinds of substances like asbestos and concrete, putting their ass in titties and getting sick in the operation and wondering why. So I'm gonna give you ladies this warning. Okay? If you go to a third world country and they put cement in your butt implant and you get sick, that's your ass fault. Alright, so before I get out of here, we uh at the barbershop, we come up with a lot of cultural things at the barbershop. And um we came up with this new black national anthem. And as I look around the room, there's not enough black people here to dispute it. So here we go. <laughs> Kanye West does not represent black people. Oh, yeah. 